Looking for an easy to use, ready to spray out of the bottle airbrush paint? This video is for you. I try and buy a lot of different airbrush paints. These are some of the smoothest airbrush paints I have ever used. And that would be Comart airbrush paints. And keep watching to see why I think these are one of the most underrated illustration airbrush paints on the market. One of the factors that can determine how well an airbrush paint sprays is the viscosity. So the easiest way for me to show you guys what the viscosity of these are between these and a couple of other major paint manufacturers out there is to have a race. All right, our three competitors in the race, we have the Createx Illustration, the Golden High Flows, and the Comart paints. What we're going to do, we're going to put a drop of paint down there. We're going to see who runs the race fastest, which will tell us which one has the lowest viscosity, which one's going to probably flow a little bit better, right? So we'll start out with the Createx Illustration. We'll put Createx Illustration on there. Then we will start our number two racer is the Golden High Flow. And then we're going to come and from, from the back side, we got our Comart. And Comart comes from behind and wins. So I'm going to grab my GSI Creos PS270, which is a 0.2 nozzle. And we're going to go ahead and spray some doodles out of here and see how it sprays straight out of the bottle in this airbrush. Straight out of the bottle, turn the pressure to about 20 PSI, and exactly as I expected, and having had some experience with these in the past, of course, they are flowing just perfectly. Okay, so I already knew they were going to flow good, so now let's test on how they erase and how they're going to be able to be manipulated after they're on the surface when they're rewettable and erasable. The next clip is going to show how you can manipulate erasing techniques or subtractive techniques. Okay, now I'm putting a couple of sprays on TerraSlate synthetic paper, and this is going to show the erasability of the paint. Um, so this paint, when I first sprayed it on this side, is not very old. So I'm going to show you that you can scratch not all the way through, or you can scratch all the way through the paint. So we're going to show if I change the pressures, how you can scratch without removing all the paint, or if you want to scratch a little bit stronger, you're going to scratch all the way through the paint. And then of course takes some practice, but there are various levels that you can do to scratch out little highlights with. So now I'm going to spray another section and let the section on the left hand side dry for a little bit so I can show that you can erase cleanly of course while the paint is still pretty fresh. That's easy enough and you can do some subtle erasing while the paint is fresh as well. And what we're going to do is a little bit of subtle eraser with the aggressive eraser. And then we're going to go in with a soft eraser and show how you can erase subtle tones into the paint even while it's fresh. And then we're going to go into the paint that's been sitting for a little while and show that you can subtly erase across the paint as it has been sitting. And then, of course, we're going to come back and show that you can aggressively erase on the paint as it's older and get all the way back pretty much to a clean sheet. And you can always, of course, definitely scratch back out once the paint has been sitting for some time. One of the other things about these paints is they are very, very clean. They are, the transparents are almost of a candy-like consistency. So they're more, act more like a dye than they do an acrylic paint, even though they're actually a paint. So these clips are going to show you how you can even blend over the light colors on top of the dark transparent colors without any weird shifts going. Of course, that's only with the transparents. You couldn't do that with the opaques. All right, that sounds great, doesn't it? All this sounds awesome. However, there are some downsides and there's always a trade-off. And those of you who watch me know I use a lot of Createx products. I use a great deal of Createx illustration. Why don't I just use these all the time? Well, that's what we talk about trade-offs. Okay, so this is the transparent black, one of the trade-offs I was talking about. So if I came in here with the transparent black, it's going to take a while to build that tone. And that's not necessarily depending on how you work. This is on paper. So even on paper, if I come over here and I pull back, you can see how I'm already spidering out pretty quickly, even on a soft surface. Come over here to a hard surface, you see how that's barely leaving any mark. So 
to get a dark tone with the transparent, which is pretty common. And a lot of people will be working with transparent wanting to work, but you don't have that ability to have it dark quicker. So that's the transparent. We're going to next do the opaque. So this is the opaque com art. And even with the opaque com art, you're going to have to build that tone up slowly. You're not going to be able to, even with the opaque, if you come in here, it's going to quickly start to spider out on you. And this is, like I said, on a soft surface. This is the Createx Illustration transparent now. And as you can see, Yes, I have to build that up a little bit, but you can see how that quickly gets darker a lot faster. And yes, I can splatter that out too, but it's not near as pronounced. It's not going to spider out on you nearly as quickly. Okay, so now what I've got is a trans is the transparent black, and this is a piece of aluminum composite panel which has been sanded, and it's something I've been running some tests on, and. You'll see if you were working on a hard surface, you would really, really, really have to sneak up on it. It's very easy for you to have blowouts. It does not take much for it to start blowing out and giving you problems. And there can be some benefit to that. I've done that before where I've done, you know, for some special effects where I came in here, cranked the pressure up on my regular paints. And you know, thin them down, and then I could do these, you know, really cool texture effects and come back and cut back through paint. But it's going to be a lot more pronounced with this paint than almost any other. So if you're going to work on a hard surface or if you're going to put it on models or something like that, I would suggest that you make sure you're going over a primed layer first because it'll stick to the paint pretty well. But if you're working on a hard surface like that, like I said, that is an aluminum composite panel, so that's powder coated and sanded. And that would be, even if you're careful with it, the paint is not that durable. You could do some tape outs with it, but it's really easy to get scratched. Even way more so than the Createx Illustration paints, which are re erasable and rewettable. These are much less durable than those. And the Golden High Flows are a little less durable than the Createx Illustration. And I'd say the Comarts are even less durable than the Golden High Flows. All right, so as I was talking about, is you have to build up in there. And that's because the pigment load's not very heavy in these paints. As a matter of fact, with the white, the white is not going to give you a much coverage coming back over with it. As a matter of fact, I would use the white only for tinning strength. Now, what's my thoughts on these? I will not use them on larger paintings because they do not go very far um, because it takes a lot to build them up. I wouldn't use them on larger paintings, but I have used them on small paintings. Matter of fact, I used them on this little bunny here the other day, painted this bunny up with it, no problem. And that was great. And I used them on some small paintings and I'll even use them in spaces within a large painting, but I will not try to paint like an 18 by 24 all with Comart. I would probably pull my hair out. I like to work a little bit faster than that. And most other paints that I use give me all the characteristics that I need. But at the end of the day, these do flow tremendously well. The only paint that I could compare out of all the paints that I bought that can flow and have as little tip dry as these would be the E-Tech EFX. Why did I make the comment that these are one of the most underrated illustration paints available? Because when it comes to smaller paintings like that, they are very, very hassle-free. They thin down. You just put a little distilled water if you do need to, dis need to thin them at all. And they work. And they work without clogging up your airbrush. They're very friendly for beginners. I work with want a heavier pigment load so of course i use a different paint than this in most cases but i still use these from time to time and uh, i'll drop a link down for a kit of these if you guys want to check them out let me know what you think are these the kind of paints that you want to work with do you work with small stuff i know some modelers who also use these so if you've got any experience using these on models let me know drop me a comment down below that's going to be a wrap guys i'm bill kennedy with the airspace i hope you all have a great day bye